Today we're going to look at a suite, and when and when we say a suite is converging and when it's born, so we're going to look at a number of examples, I should say, or rather prepositions, or yeah, demonstration is an is an example. So we'll look at that. Yeah, how? Um, we, excuse me, Mono. Yeah. Before you go far, I'm kindly asking if you could re-explain what a limit is and how you calculate it. How I what? How to calculate a limit of a suite. Okay, how to calculate a limit of a suite. So basically, how you can calculate that is, first of all, it depends on the kind of question you've been given. Definitely, when it comes to a limit of a suite, it's literally almost the same thing as just how you solve a normal limit. I don't know whether you guys have already been given examples on how to solve limits under suites. I don't know. If you've, if, you've, if you've already been given examples or not. Yeah, but normally whenever you're solving a limit under a suite, it's basically the exact same way you solve a normal limit. They're going to give you a limit, they're going to give you um, an equation or, or the sort, something like that, yeah. And then they'll tell you guys to solve the limit. Basically, you're looking at limits, the same principle that you guys had learned, like during your, when you did ordinary mathematics, or those who even did, um, what, what's that, what's that called? The other math. Oh, yeah, add math. Yes, yeah. The principles are the same principles. You add the same principles, even in this way of solving limits. The same things are applied. The only difference when it comes to, when it comes to the way it is in analysis is maybe, for example, um, if you are, if you're maybe, if you're using a limit that's unique and everything else, then they have to change a few things. Otherwise, the principle is the same principle. There's no difference. They tell you that if you've been given a limit where X is going to be approaching two, then now they've given you, uh, let's say they're giving you maybe three X plus seven over, over three, whatever, something like that, yeah. The same way you would solve it back in math is the exact same way you'd solve it here. The same principle is the same the same principle so just yeah that's why i had said you guys should try by all means to try and solve some limits here because the same things they're going to add them use them so these limits here yeah mm, otherwise it's the same principle just a few changes but the aren't that graph yeah then let me see is there an example here of a uh, let me see if there's an example here of a limit under your suite. Mm. No, let me see. Nah, there's no example here of a limit. Yeah, but basically it's the same thing, the same approach you'd use when you, when you all did math and those who did add the same thing. You, you, you use that same principle here. Otherwise, the same thing. There's no difference. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know whether I've answered your question. I don't know whether that was Mapalo who asked the question or not. I don't know who that is. Yeah. So today, we'll be looking at this people when a suite is converging. And we, so what has happened here is that, first of all, the, they've given us an example, or you say, or a demonstration. Yeah. So I have a question. Huh? Okay. Yeah, so in this case here, yeah, in this case here, we've been given a given a demonstration, eh? And in this demonstration, we're looking at we've been given a particular case where our limit, so yeah, where our limit n is going to be is going to be approaching um infinity. And where the suite is equals to zero. 
Yeah, and where the, the sweet is equals to zero. Yes, so that's what you've been given in this case here. Mm, just hold on. Ah, Enest is here, okay. Um, Enest has defined what a limit is in the, in the comments. Mapalo, the definition is there. If you want it, it's there. Yeah, so in this case here, today's, today's work, rather, we've been given this demonstration where it's a particular case where the sweet, sorry, where the limit is going to be approaching infinity and our sweet is equals to zero. Yeah. And then remember we say that whenever you're looking at a sweet, normally like some sweets, they they are defined. And by definition of what we've been given here, what we've been given here, it's here. So can someone please read what this means in the comments? I need sorry, no, no. Someone here to read what this means. Last week I had no on Friday. Yeah, yeah, last week. I read what this means last week, going in a different way. So someone come and read what it means. Anybody? Uh, you mean not the interpretation, but just the way the symbols and everything, just the way they are. The interpretation. You remember how I did it last week, the exact same way. I'm waiting for you guys. Because we are not going to proceed until someone reads it. Because I need to know that you guys actually know what it means. Because let's say, for example, in your question, they've given you something like this. Yeah, they've given you something like this in the question. Then how are you going to know what to solve if you can't even read this, if you don't know what this means? Oh, um, may I read? Who's talking, sorry? This is Linda. Huh? This is Linda. Okay, Linda, go ahead. Okay, it reads, um, all epsilon is um, greater than zero, and there exists an, um, a number n, which is a member of natural numbers, such that uh, all n is greater than or equal to n, where we have uh, un, which is a suite, minus zero is lesser than epsilon. Yeah, perfect. That's nice. Yeah, exactly what, what Linda has said. That's what it actually means. So I'm glad at least someone, I hope everyone else also knows how to read that or rather the interpretation of it. Yeah. So basically, yeah, so basically it's been defined that, um, yeah, it's been defined that for all epsilon is greater than zero. Then there exists an N, which is a member of natural numbers. And if you guys can see, it's very similar to the interpretation of the one we looked at, the case we looked at last week. Mm, let me look for the case. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, you see, it's very, very similar. Except this time around here, it was the sweet minus L. And then today, it's... um. Yeah, today it's the sweet minus zero. Remember, here, we've been told that this case is very particular. And in this case here, our sweet is equals to zero. So here it's zero, while last week's case was L. You see two different cases. And this here is a special case. Yeah, so otherwise it's basically the same thing as we looked at last week, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the same thing. Mm -hmm. The same thing, just this part here that changes. Where here it's L, then today it's zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, go on. I hope you guys are able to see the differences. And yeah. So, this is the definition of what we've been given here of where the limit n is approaching infinity and our suite is equals to zero. Then here it says that, um, here it says in particular, yeah, in particular, the epsilon is equals to zero. And mind you, it's not all the time that they'll tell you that no, it's equals to one. Normally, they won't even tell you it's equals to one and epsilon is not equals to one, please. This here 
is just for this situation here. So don't take that, no, it's equals to one. No, it's not equals to one. It's just in this scenario where they've said, no, we'll let the epsilon be equals to one. Just this scenario here, yeah. Then it goes on to say there exists an N, which is a member of natural numbers. And remember we say that this N can be any number, it can be any integer. So whatever integer you can think of, you can suppose it's that integer. And as long as it's a member of natural numbers, you all know what natural numbers are. Yeah. And then it goes on to say for all N, is greater or equals to natural number is equals to um n meaning that yeah meaning that these two represent numbers eh? and meaning that this small n here should be greater whatever value this small n here should be greater than the value of the capital n here yeah and then it, it goes on to say we have a suite yeah we have a suite which is here we have a suite here which should be less than or equals to one, meaning in this case here. So this first sentence here, you really need to understand it so that you can, as you go on, at least you have somewhere to build on. Because if you don't understand this part here, I don't think you'll be able to get what it's fully trying to say in this entire paragraph. So make sure that you guys know what the symbols mean. And you, if you, if you are not able to like easily master them, just try by all means to like write them down because they will appear over and over and over again. So you don't get confused and don't get lost. You have to know what the symbols mean. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So before I go on, I'm going to see what I said. So here, this demonstration, we have a limit where the n is approaching infinity. And this infinity here has is positively charged, meaning that it's all positive numbers in this case here. Then now the sweep we've been given is equals to zero. You know, at times what can happen is that um, a limit can be n is approaching infinity. Then maybe here they can give you a particular fraction, eh? Yeah, that's an example of how a suite looks like. For those who wouldn't how a suite looks like, like an, a question, so a question of a limit, not a suite, a limit. Yeah, so you have a limit n approaching infinity. You know, maybe here they can give you x plus two over seven or whatever it is, like here. And then it will be now you now having to find what it's equals to. Then now in this case here, um, they told us, we've been told that our equation or of a sort is a sweet. They didn't specify what sweet it is, but they said it's a sweet, and that sweet is equals to zero. And then this entire thing here has been defined down here. It say it's been defined down here. Then here we've been told that for all epsilon is greater than zero. Then there exists a number that's a member of natural numbers. And then it goes on to say such that um, for all n, then now this n comes from the fact that a sweet is. Um, the, the suite is like the sign is two n, and this n is this n here. Yeah, so remember I said a suite is always in function of n. This is why the n is here and the n is here. We already explained that last week. Then it says that for all n, mean that all the n's, yeah, yeah, for all n's is greater or equals to um capital n, meaning that. This n here should be whatever value that's here should be greater than the value that's here. The same thing that goes about in this part here, the exact same thing, except here we've been told that the epsilon here is equals to one. That's a two. We've been told there. Then in this case here, we found the modulus of the suite should be less or equals to one. So whatever it is you find, it should be less or equals to one. That's how it is here. Yeah, that's how it is here. Yeah. Then it goes on to say that. Um, we have k, yeah, we have k. Now, this k is equals to the maximum value of any suite, be it suite, meaning that each suite here is, is represented by a particular, yeah, because here we've got the suite here, suite zero, one, 
and it goes on till n minus one. This n minus one here simply means that we don't know where it ends. Yeah, yeah. We don't know like what value, like what, what value should be here. Because it goes on on and on and on and on and on and on. Then we say this n here, this capital n here, can you present any number? Minus one, as long as this set here, the maximum should be one. Yeah, this n here, the maximum should be straight. This, um, the k, the set here, the maximum should be equals to one. So this here represents a suite. This here represents a suite. Meaning that so many other suites here may end on n minus one. Then our last one should be one. Yeah. And then here it says that we have um, the, the modulus of the suite should be less or equals to our k. Then now this k here re represents the maximum of each suite, of each particular suite here that we're going to use. Let's say, for example, they say that k is equal to the maximum of the u0, and then we, we've already been given, so, and then we've already found what u0 is. Yeah, that means this u0 has got a representation, this u1 here till our one itself, our value one there. Yeah, so then it says that our suite should be less or equals to the k. Meaning that whatever switch you're going to find here should be less than the k. And this k here is a maximum of a particular switch that we've been given. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it says that, the, remember that this n here comes from the fact that a switch is in function of n. And that's how we know that a switch is born. So basically, so basically, under this particular case here, everything here is being defined for you yeah it's been defined for you how you can know that this suite here is born because here they've told you that okay first thing first and foremost here the episode is equals to one we'll start there this n here is the number of natural numbers as usual now this n here the value should be smaller so uh, the value should be greater than the capital n whatever suite you've been given when you find the modulus of that suite, it should be less than or equals to one. And then in this particular case, there's also a K. And that K is going to represent the maximum value of each suite. And here they gave us suite zero, one, two, and two, one. So whatever it is here that you've been given, whatever it is that you've been given, let, let's say for example, your question here, yeah, your your question your question here is talking about maybe like um u zero a meaning that yeah, meaning that your 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 k here is going to be equals to the maximum of that u zero so whatever it is you've been given here goes with goes with like it goes with the information you've been given so we know that the k is going is equals to the maximum value of a particular suite and when you find the modulus of the of the suite you've been given whatever we find should be less than the k, knowing that the k is equal to the maximum value of a particular suite. And that's how you know that it's one. Yeah. And then it's, it goes on to say now, um, in this case, yeah, in this, yes, no, 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 yeah. In the, yeah, in the general case, like last time, we were looking at the L here has come back. Yeah, this L here has come back. So in the case where in the in the case where in, in a general case where you've got Vn is equals to Vn. By the way, this Vn here also represents a suite, it's a particular suite. Yeah. And I'm sure this Vn is going to appear a lot when you as you guys solve questions and as we go and as you move forward, you see the Vn here is going to appear over and over again. So it's no stranger. It's going to be there. Yeah. So now it says in the general case, Vn is equals to the suite minus this L here. And we say L here. Okay. Now we to a certificate. I can't. No, but I'm gonna Please, you can explain at the end of the paragraph from. From in up to born.
ah, the person who was talking, please help us by explaining for us what this part means. Yeah. Please, you'll be very helpful. Mm -hmm. As I said last week, guys, make sure that your microphones are off because I was going to explain this part. So please, the person who was, who was on that video, sorry, on that, um, do not listen to anyone audio or whatever it is you're doing, please try and explain this before I re-explain it. I'm waiting for you guys. It's, it's eating your own time, not my time. Because me, as I said, at 16, at 16, what, I think I said 16 point or 16.30, I'm going to end this class. So I'm waiting for the person whose audio was on to explain this part for us. Just kind to continue. Eh? He has uh, said that it was a mistake, so <laughs> I think we can no. have proceed. No, sure, sure. Yeah, it was a mistake. Yeah, but then, but then, okay. I want him to. I want him to read this. To just try and read this. Yeah, I'm going to explain. Yeah, but just try and read this. Sorry, let me admit someone. I'm waiting for you. Yo, just continue. I'm not going to continue until the person tries to read this. Guys, this is very simple. Anyone can read this. It's very, very simple. Yo, we're working with five minutes. So just continue. Just forget about that. I'm waiting for you. I'm not going to continue until, yeah, until the person whose audio was on can read this. I'm waiting. As I said, my time is your, your time, not my time. And this affects you guys, not me. So. We are sorry on his behalf. Please, you can continue. It's not, it's not about you guys being sorry or anything like that. No. I want the person to be a part of the class. Hold on. Just give me a second. You guys, it's so simple. No, you guys don't have to apologize for don't apologize for anything. You've done nothing wrong. I just want the person to just read this. Guys, is it, is it so hard to just try and read this? Okay, let me try. Thank you. Up to where first? The end. Mm. <laughs> From in okay. on. It's just very it's very short. Okay, it's it said huh? that too. In, in, in the general, you pause the switch, uh -huh. which is minus L. Uh -huh. If L is the limit of a certain switch, uh -huh. also it's same switch for a limit zero. Uh -huh. Therefore, after a particular, the switch is born. Uh -huh. Then it exists M and a small M such that the M is less than equals to a switch and less than equals to the bigger M uh -huh. for all smaller N. Mm -hmm. Also, L, M plus L is less uh -huh. than equals to a switch, which uh -huh. is less than equals to bigger M plus L. Uh -huh. uh, then the, the, the last part, uh, this, this, this verb, I've forgotten what it means, but it's then that the switch is, is born. Thank you. You see, guys, was that so hard? That wasn't hard. That's all I wanted. That's all. It wasn't hard. So, yeah, anyway, so it says in the general case, you have VN, and VN is equals to the UN minus the L. Then now it says the L is a limit. The L is a limit of the UN. And then VN has a limit. Yeah, uh, VN has a limit zero. Meaning, meaning in this case here, you've got two different suites. You have a suite VN and a suite UN. UN has a limit L, and VN has a limit zero. Yeah. Mm hmm yeah and then now when the vn has a limit of zero 
the sweet is born, the sweet VN is born. This is in this particular case. Yeah. So that's the first part. When we, you're looking at VN. So VN is also equals to a sweet. It's also a sweet. Mean that when your limit is equals to zero for VN, and we know that VN is equals to UN minus L, and L is a limit of UN. And by the way, I said we had looked at um, when your limit is equals to L on Friday. Yeah. So this L has come back. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to say that we now have, now they've now introduced M. You have two different types of M, a capital M and a small M. And these M's represent something. And normally this formula, this formula here is used. Yeah. It's formula here. Is it this one? No, no. It's the other one. No, no. Okay. There's a formula where, no, I think even this one, yeah, it should be used to, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it should be used to, yeah. Yes. So, they've introduced capital M and small m. Then, they've now defined it saying that the m should be less or equals to the sweet, meaning that both capital and small m, and small m, they're both, they're both, um, yeah. It says the m should be less or equals to our sweet here, right? And then, now, this sweet should be less or equals to this capital M here, meaning that our capital M here should be a big value, should be a big value. At the same time, this UN here is also going to be a big value, whereby this little M here is going to be a small value because here it's been defined that the small M is less or equals to the UN, meaning that automatically this, whatever, whatever value you find as M, should be smaller than our uh, than your UN here. At the same time, your UN should be a number which is small, that smaller than the capital M. Yeah, and always note that whenever you're looking at the suites, they will normally refer um, the small n because a suite is a function of n. That's how it is. The exact same way when you're looking at a fun maybe other functions. Maybe it's in function of y, x, z, whatever it is. So when you see an n and when you see whatever it is you've been given, you see the u n there, okay, you should know, okay, right now I'm dealing with the sweet and nothing else. Yeah. And when you see, okay, I'm dealing with the sweet, what have you, what's under a sweet? What is a sweet? Um, what are the properties of a sweet? What's this? What's this? What's that? That's how you build on questions. At least, at least that's how you now will be able to draw different questions, draw different information which you're going to apply in your questions. So make sure that you know that a suite is capital, is big N and a small N. So a big U and a small N, this symbol here. Not, okay, I'm dealing with a suite. If when you see the VN here, this VN here, here, here is also a suite as well. It's a different suite. I know that suites differ according, according to what limit you've been given and what case you've been given. So you should make sure that you know the different situations, different cases, know the prepositions. You don't have to know them like um, by like point by point, say no, preposition one, two, three, four, five, no. Just find a way to just draft things for you, the way, how they work for you, so that you're able to remember each and every single thing, and able to apply them, apply the information you have when you're solving the questions. That's what's important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah. What's your question? Samuel, what's your question? Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, the first, but the first uh, statement. Yeah, this which first? One, yeah, this one, which says, in particular, for uh -huh. one, is equal to one, it exists in, which is a member of natural numbers, such that uh -huh. for the n is uh -huh. equal to n. Uh -huh. Yeah, now, does it mean that a sweet is a bonnet when it, its uh, modulus is less or equal to one only? Pardon? Okay, I didn't understand where um, you explained that this sweet is a bonnet. Does it mean that uh, a bonnet comes in when a sweet, the modulus of a of of certain sweet is less than or equal to one? No. In this case here, a switch is only born when the modulus of the switch is less than or equals to k. No one is equals to one. We're looking at this particular case here. Yeah, this particular case here. 
because here where it says that um the sweet here is less or equals to one this here was just data they gave you so they can so they can just try and build on so that you're able to understand what is that is going on here and then plus don't forget that they had to they introduced the one here when they said the epistle is equals to the one the switch is only born in this case here when the un is less or equals to k and this un here here you must find the modulus of the un that's how it is that's when a switch is born for this case here for this particular case here yeah not when it's less or equals to one but when it's less or equals to k and this k here represents the maximum value of a particular suite be it u0 u1 whatever yeah so only when it's less or equals to k that's when the switch is born mm -hmm. yeah so i'll go on it says so yeah so in this case we've been given our we have our, our capital m and our small m okay eh? And this capital M and the small m, they represent something. Normally, the small m is going to represent a small number, and the capital M will represent a bigger number. And the UN here is a sweet. By nature, we know what a sweet is. By nature, this is how it's defined. Yeah. And we, we, this M and this M here represent something. In this case here, they haven't said what exactly it is. It can be one, it can be two, it can be hundred, it can be, I don't know, whatever it is. But let's know that this M here should be a small value and this capital M here should be a bigger value. But noting that this whole thing here is in function of N. Why? Because a sweet is in function of N. Knowing that a sweet is equals to un, that's how it is for this part here. And then now, yeah, knowing that we've been given this here, right? We've been given this data here. Eh? Now, remember we had remember we had said that the limit, yeah, the limit for a sweet un is l, isn't it? This is why in this case here, they now said small m plus l is less or equals to the un is less or equals to the capital M plus L. Why? Because why? Because in this case here, this limit for UN is L. This is why it's like this here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And from there, we're able to prove that the sweet UN is born. I remember here we said that for the case of VN, the it's only when the limit here is zero. This is the case. So this entire thing here, actually this entire demonstration here, they have in the case where the, your limit is approaching infinity and your un is equals to zero what happens is that quite you know quite right yes here our un here is equals to zero and our limit here it says it's approaching our n here is approaching um infinity eh? i know most of you guys want to say that wait wait one number then here it says that it says this suite here is approaching infinity but then yeah but then but then in the notes there it says that our limit there it says our limit there is L. So why is it that why is it that here they put L and not infinity? That's if you guys are thinking in that way. You know, if you guys are really wondering, trying to know what and how it is. Yes, yeah. Maybe I best say confusing you guys. I don't know. I hope I haven't said confusing you guys. Yeah. But otherwise, this here was a general case here. And this part here, things were broken down. So do we know how a suite is born when it's under the case of our n approaching infinity and our sweet being equals to zero so basically so basically let's say for example they they are said calculate when your limit is approaching infinity and yeah then you've been given you in now find the answer now in this case here they found the answer here and it's zero yet they didn't give you what the un here is right but then they're giving you all the data for you to know that this un is equals to zero so this here is what was going on mm -hmm. sorry let me just read the questions i mean the yeah, um what's in the chat um, oh okay nothing yeah so that's what's on this part here mm -hmm. so then now there's a remark yeah normally what happens is that um yeah first thing and whenever I see a remark, make sure that you guys really look at the remarks and you keep the remarks. Because these remarks, huh, they are, they come. Yeah, they come forward. So make sure that you actually like know what's up and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And before I go on to this part here, I hope you guys are understanding. Please, if you understand, please say at I understand. Okay, 
You guys are not getting uh, anything. I've got the question. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you, for that particular principle, yeah, yeah, just from explaining, uh-huh. is it for that you can give us an example of a question so that we see how that principle applies? Um, okay, well, I didn't look at any questions under this principle, but if I find a question, please, I will do just that. Okay, you know what? Just give me a second. Just give me a second. Let me get a group I love it. Anyway, as I'm looking for the, for a question in that case, anyone else with any other question before I go on? The that thing that you uh, that you got about that uh, there was a limit that n was heading to the infinity, but we put the l uh, acting as the infinity in that uh, demonstration. So is it that uh, the L is a representation of the infinity itself or what? Not necessarily that it represents infinity, no, but then it's just it's just a way of them trying to simplify things such a such a able to prove that the switch is born in the case. That they're basically just trying to find a way for it to find a way to simplify to, to, to simplify um, a calculation or rather information on how they found it equals to zero and how they're able to find what they found. Not, not that the L is going to represent infinity, no. Mm-mm. It's just them trying to find a way to make things easier and, and to simplify things, yeah. Any question before I go, before I go on? No questions? Okay, so, um, as I say, whenever you're looking at remarks, make sure that you actually read through the remarks and you, yeah, you read through the remarks and you try by all means to note whatever remarks that you've been given. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this remark here says that first of all, whatever, the way they've, oops. Yeah, it says that first of all, whatever it is, here, here, the way they demonstrated this, if you do this in any other, in the opposite way, it's not true, it's false. Yeah, so only this way is the right way, according to their remark, so what they've said. And, yeah, so what they've said. And they also define the sweet, saying the sweet is equal to negative one, the power n. Now we say that n can be any number, according to whatever it is you've been given. Yes. So a remark, you note the remark, and make sure when you note the remark, you also note the information that it's talking about, like where are they coming from, like why are they saying this is equals to this, and this is this, and this, and this, and that. Because let's say, for example, you try and use this remark on a different preposition, it's going to be, it's not going to be true. It's not going to be true. Maybe it might be true sometimes, but then you really have to know when to use a particular remark. So in this case, yeah, so it's only in this case here that when you do this in the opposite way, that is not true. And also that your switch is going to be equals to negative one to the power n. Yeah. And then after they found the switch is equal to negative one to the power n, they also they also defined it and say that the switch here is born and diverging, meaning that this particular remark here applies for this situation here. This is why whenever you look at when you look at a different proposition. Try and make sure you align the particular remark so that you don't miss up different things you've been given. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that. Next proposition. So this first one, we're looking at a limit. N approaching infinity, UN is equals to zero. Here. And in this case here, they brought about VN. And VN, the limit was zero. Then the UN, the limit, was um, was L, and then we say that yeah, and then we say that um, for V n when the limit is zero, under only this case is how we knew that the V n is born, and then now for the U n for the U n for them to explain to us why it's born exactly, they had to introduce capital M and small m, and when they introduced it, they now had to now um, add on 
the limits, the air there, for them to further explain exactly why it's born. That was for the first case. Yeah, for this first case here. The second case, and we also had the, the remark, this remark here. You, you, you note this remark. Now, the second case, sorry, second proposition. So, it says that if a sweet UN is born and the VN is a sweet that is converging towards zero, so we have the sweet UN and VN are, are going to be converging towards zero. Meaning that, first of all, you know that one, UN is born, the VN is already converging, and the VN, and the VN is going to be approaching zero, isn't it? They now they conclude and say that, and say that the sweet UN and VN, they're both converging, and they're both equals to zero, but we don't know if the VN is also born, but we know that the VN and the UN, they're both converging towards zero. That we know for this here. That we know. Yeah. Now, how to explain what they said in the paragraph? Here's a demonstration. In this case here, in this case here, we have we're looking at two things, VN and looking at UN. And we know that totally both UN and the VN, they're both converging and they are converging towards zero. Yeah. So we have a suite. We have a suite UN by just by the first part here. And by the way, these are conditions because there's if, they see, meaning it's a condition, it's a condition, yeah. All these here are conditions, you have to note that they're conditions. And like this one, was this? No, and like, yeah, this one here too was, was also a condition here as well. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this one here is also a condition mm -hmm. that if, if, if the UN is a suite that's born, and if the VN is a suite that is converging towards zero, so the suite VN and the suite VN and UN are going to be converging towards zero. That's what they're trying to say in this case here. And I said here, it is a condition. It says if, now we demonstrate it, or rather we read the demonstration, try to understand the demonstration. Yes, yeah. So first and foremost, we know, we know that the sweet UN is born and the modulus of UN is majority. And then they say, we look at this proposition here, meaning that in this, meaning that in this, sorry, you know, not this one, position one, three, one, one. Yeah. Yes, this one here. So meaning that the proposition we're looking at now, where we're looking at the UN, and the VN, them, them converging towards zero. And here, and they, they also say that the modulus of the UN is majority, just like here. So here, what happens is that here, they've aligned the preposition 311. And last time we looked at this preposition. Yes, we looked at it. So we looked at it, right? Yeah, we looked at it, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, let me explain this preposition, 311, yeah, before we go any further. Yeah, okay, so for this preposition, in we were able to understand exactly what's going on in the other preposition, in, in the other preposition down there. Where are you doing Oh, uh, a minute. Yeah? There was somewhere you were saying that you, you already explained. Where, where is it exactly? This here, I'm trying to, I'm going to re-explain it. Yeah, this here, sorry, hold on. Okay, I'm going to re-explain this position here. So this one here, so you know about when a sweet is born, and yeah, it says when a sweet is born, if and only the sweet is major. So, in this case, it has a condition. So you're looking at the sweet that's born. And they say, if and only if the sweet, sorry, the modulus of the sweet is. So what happens is that here, they say, they the sweet here. And they say that we suppose a sweet that is born by what we've been given here. By the way, sorry, this here is, um, we're actually looking at this down here.
what I'm looking at is actually here. So I went all the way up so that I should show you guys what they're actually talking about. So this one here, mm, yes, yeah, this one here is not what I'm talking about. But then for this one here, they they referred us to preposition three one one one. So I don't know, should I explain that? Okay, no, let me first explain this, the whole thing here. Just for the what time is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it says in this case here, a sweet is born, and then the sweet UN is measuring. So what happens is that this is under the preposition three one one. Remember, this preposition here actually has a condition. It has a condition. It says that the sweet is only born if and only if the modulus of the sweet is measuring. Yes, so that's what this preposition here is about. It has a condition, a strict condition. Yeah, so it says that we have a K. Yeah, it says we have a K, and this K is probably represents a real number or anything real. Yeah, and it says the modulus of the sweet is less or equals to k. And we know what this k is. This k here can be any number. We don't know. Yeah. As usual, n is a member of natural numbers. Guys, this here is going to appear so many times. You just have to get used to it. And yeah, because this is how they're trying to define it. Because they just can't give you something like this. And then like won't, they won't define what the, what the n here is going to represent. Because let's say, for example, you put 0 here. You wonder, why is it u0? Yeah, and then now here, when you say any the member of natural numbers, here they have explained to you why the small n here can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 7, whatever it is here. This is why this is here. This, this is here to define whatever it is they may put here. Yeah, that's why it's there. Mm -hmm. So, in this preposition here, and like the other prepositions, eh, here, episode, guys, is... Yeah, here episode omega is greater than zero. Remember the other one from looking at there, the episode was yeah, the episode was actually was equals to one. Yeah, equals to one. In this case here, it's different. It's been fixed that the episode here is is greater than zero, and we already know that episode is greater. It's a small small number. It, but then it's not zero. Neither is it one. But it's a small small number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's something in my eye. Yes. Yeah. So. That's that. Um, yeah. So it says Vn is converging towards zero. We have n as usual, which is a member of natural numbers. And in this case here, it says that the modulus of the Vn is less than epsilon over k. And k there, yeah, and k there represents a particular number. Yeah. And it goes on to say that for all n is greater or equal to capital N, hello. The modulus of the UN and the VN is uh, equal to. Huh? You have a question? Yes. Here you said uh, the, sweet, the modulus of a sweet UN is mm -hmm. less than equal to K to represent a particular number. It doesn't represent what is a maximum. Here they haven't told us whether this K in this preposition here will also. It's also going to be equal to the maximum because it was in this in this preposition here where we were told that where we were told that the k is equal to the maximum. Here they haven't told us whether whether the k is the maximum. We can suppose the k here is the maximum, yes, yeah. But in this case here, no info has been given about the k. But since it hasn't been given about the k, I guess we can suppose also that this k is also going to be equal to, equal to the maximum of the particular suites. Otherwise, here there's no much data on what the K e, on, on what the K means here. Yeah, but you can always suppose uh, that that's the meaning. Yeah. So this the sweet V in here is being you no, know, it's been simplified a little bit. You know, it's been explained. Yeah, that the modulus of V in is going to be less than epsilon over K. And then we know that as usual, the n the small n is greater or equal to capital N. That this here, we already know this. We've been looking at this, I think, from last week. Yeah. So we have our VN and our UN. Here it's been separated. It's been separated here. We know that this here is equal to this. It's the same thing. Yeah. And then 
in this in this case here remember what we have like here it says our b in here right is epistone over k we have that there right mm -hmm. yes yeah and then this is for our b n then for our u n we know that our, we know that the modulus of our u n is going to be less than or equals to k this is why it's k here meaning that we know what this is equals to sorry, what this is less than you know this is less than this is why it's k times epsilon over k is equals to epsilon because here you cancel cancel there what's the k is only the epsilon so you end up having this equals to epsilon yeah so basically here what given what our un here is what our vn is less than actually yeah mm -hmm. so first of all remember that whenever you see whenever you see um the modulus of the u of the UN and we and we even know that it's majore. Know that it's only majore. Sorry, know that only major no, know that it's only born. Yeah, it's only born if and only if the sweet UN and that sweet there you should find the modulus of the of the sweet UN is majore. Yeah. And you find all this data when you look when you go back up. How is that your position? Yeah, so you only find, yeah, so this part here is where they have, where they explain nicely, they didn't give a demonstration on how you know this part and everything else here. So that's for that part there. What is a position here from looking at? So, I've got a question. Yeah, sure. Yeah, from from where, just go a bit up from that preposition. This one here? Great. Where it was saying C as well more should be the first preposition. Where you're from reading? Yeah, here. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just want uh, to try it here. Uh, d does it also mean that the sweet UN is the same as this one in modulus UN? No. Okay, let's say, for example, you think, let's say, for example, um, you've been given, let's say, if they negative three. They said you remember they said we assume we will suppose they say UN is equal to negative three. And then we have modulus of the modulus of the UN and you know the UN is equal to negative three. Are those two values going to be the same? Negative three and three are two different numbers, right? Yeah. So yeah. and yeah, and unless maybe even after you find even after you find the modulus of whatever it is you've been given, you still find the same value of the UN, then you can say that yeah, they are the same. Oh, but there is a on on the same equivalent equivalence yeah on equivalence huh? it says that this same statement is saying c as well more c is the same as equivalence or it is the the sweet this one it's equivalent to this one sorry where where are you where are you reading at the, at the same part here no not that part i'm saying this statement which is saying La suite est bonne, si et seulement si la suite UN. This statement which is here, also, does it also mean to say la suite est equivalence to this suite which is in modulus? Sorry, I, I cannot see where you're reading the other one you're talking about. Is this where I am? Like, is it still here? No, there is a this same statement here, which is here the preposition. Oh, okay, okay. When they ask this, the one where from doing, huh?
I can't, guys. Um, where are you? What were you saying? Hello. Okay. Um, we'll have to wait for his question, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, it's fine. Okay. All right. Mm. Yeah. So that's that. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that for this part here. Yeah, so today we've looked at two different prepositions, looked at the one where we've been given, where the limit is approaching infinity and our suite is equals to zero. And we also looked at um, when we've been given two suites, two, two different suites, UN and VN, that are converging in the heading towards zero. So we look at these two different prepositions and how they were demonstrated and all that here. Yeah. Like I said, today's class, I'm not, I'm not going to end at 17. Yeah, because I'm a little occupied. There's something I, I need to attend to. Yeah, so otherwise, um, I'll see you guys on Friday. Yeah, 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 yeah. On Friday, yeah. So please guys, make sure you go through this part here that we've looked at today and do make sure that you, solve the suites so you solve the limits and you solve this even the suites you solve them to the changes you've been given you keep solving them you only solve them once so them even twice even four times keep solving them yes you solve this you're able to if you want to even look for more suites you know the other guy who asked the question sorry i didn't find no question yes the guy with is with the person with the hand raised what's up talk Oh, there, there was a time last week, someone had asked for notes. Then you said that uh, you you set up some notes and you send in the group. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you haven't yet sent them. Oh, yes. I have to I'm so overwhelmed with the to attend to. But I'll attend to that. Yeah, hopefully the end of this week. I hope so. Yes, yeah. Otherwise... Yeah, so this is the end of the class. Make sure you guys go through everything else and um, yeah, make sure you guys go through everything else and you do what has to be done. Yeah.